Today on Motors, Chris and Alan take you to the world's greatest collector car auction, Barrett Jackson, where they not only drool over the classics, but interview celebrity guests and some industry leaders showing off their newest cars. So buckle up and hold on tight, because Motors starts now. <laughs> Every January in Scottsdale, Arizona, Alan visits Barrett Jackson, the leader in collector car auctions and automotive lifestyle events. This year, I decided to join him and see why Barrett Jackson is considered a must-see event by so many automotive enthusiasts. Welcome to Motors, a very special episode. Now normally we're in the shop, but I've been out here at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale all week with Alan, and we decided to turn this into a full episode. So let's head on inside and see what the heck's going on. Now just as you step inside is the Ford booth. They've got two Mustang GTs up on a dyno. You can race with your friend. Now how cool is that? Let's go over here to Shelby. Now just a couple of days ago, Shelby American revealed the new GT350R as well as the new GT, which has for 600 horsepower. We're going to talk to those guys too. Now check this thing out. It's got a world record land speed of 270.4 miles per hour from John Hennessy, the Venom GT. We're going to interview John coming up pretty soon. Right now we're going to head in with Alan, who's interviewing the guys from Wheeler Dealers. We're here for Barrett Jackson with a couple of guys came all the way across the pond from London, the Wheelers and Dealers. Mike Brewer, Ed China. Guys, I've been watching your show for years. Very fun, very real. Yep. I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad you're here. What do you think of Barrett Jackson? It's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's the biggest. I've never been to a car auction like it, and there are so many cars here. Just an, an epic number of cars to choose from, really. It's amazing. So you've also got a new uh, show that's about to launch. Yeah, we're very excited about that. We've got a new season of Wheeler Dealers. We've just celebrated our 100th show, and then we're going to be making 20 more shows per year from now on, but we're making half of those specifically from the US. This is a game changer then. Whereabouts are you going to be located? We've uh, set up shop at Huntington Beach, which is kind California, of which is kind of nice. It's kind of the thing, is it's the hub of the car universe, isn't it? In, on, on, sort of on the West Coast. And it's all happening right there, and you can't move for people who are into cars, which is great. And of course, also, there's a beach, which is ideal. Yeah. <laughs> so, for those who haven't seen Wheeler Dealers, Mike, give us a little okay, insight. Uh, Wheeler Dealers is a show that is all about the car. So, we take iconic cars, something that means something to you, to me, to Ed, and to the audience, it's the kind of car you would have put on a poster in your, on your bedroom wall when you was a young boy. I buy the cars. And I have uh, to do them up. And then uh, the cars always need work. We take them to the workshop, Ed fixes them up. And on each show, Ed has four specific jobs, really, two, four meaty jobs. And we try to make those different for every single episode. So we've done like 100 shows, that's 400 jobs. And even if you do the breaks, again, we always try and cover a different aspects. So, Hopefully, you know, the audience will learn something every time and I might remember something every time as well. So Ed, how is it coming to the US? How is it going to change the way you do your show? Well, actually, it's quite interesting because we have we still have the same crew. We kind of rely on them. You know, they're, they're what make, for start, they make us look good and sound good, which is great. But also, it's a collaborative process. But one of the things that's easier is that all the parts are here. So rather than having to think ahead too much, you know, we can go, oh, actually, you need one tomorrow, need a whatever, go and get the gizmo and bring it back and we can put it straight on. But yeah, no, mostly it's actually warmer easier. and more pleasant, frankly. Yeah, we like being here. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm, I feel half American. I mean, I've eaten enough burgers to, you know, <laughs> to do this to myself, so I do feel like half American. It's great. Now, how did you get into this TV show thing? Uh, back in the UK, I was already presenting a very popular car show. Uh, which was all about new cars, testing, road testing new cars, very much like the, the other popular show, Top Gear and the car show that you do. Yeah, right. uh, I was doing that 18 years ago in the UK. Uh, I was already well known, a household name. Discovery Channel put me together with Ed. 11 years later, we've um, completed over 100 shows and we're still going. And Ed, how did you get started in this? 
Well, it was a long time ago. I was playing around with cars that um, don't really look like cars. So I built a sofa, the world's fastest sofa, 87 miles an hour, it's fully street legal, did a bed and a bathroom, all kinds of weird stuff. And because of that kind of work and getting in magazines and doing races and stuff, then I also did a few things for Top Gear as well. And that's how obviously Mike and the guys kind of came across me, I guess. We, we got together and it was, you know, we instantly got along. And I think if it wasn't for that chemistry, the show would never have lasted for this long, which is, you know, the main thing. So walking out here at Barrett Jackson, you see anything that maybe you might want to take home with you? Way too many things. <laughs> <laughs> and we are car guys, and yeah. we've come to see cars, and we walk the halls, and there's been some amazing cars like the Future Liner, absolutely. But there's amazing. also a really awesome Rolls Royce with the Rolls Royce Merlin engine in it. Yeah. You know, there's a Cord Phaeton, which is one of my favourite cars. And we were almost blown away by some of the prices of the Ron Pratt stuff, and when people are paying that kind of money for cars then uh, we know we're, we're going to bring some next year. Yeah, we're going to bring some cars. <laughs> we're doing the right thing. Yeah, no, no. And this is where it all happens. But the fun part about being a car guy is you can spot the other ones when they tell the hot looking girls to get out of the way. Yeah, 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 take yeah, a picture yeah, of that car, yeah, you know? And or lose your voice screaming and going, yeah, all right! Yeah, yeah, you know? Don't do that, you nearly bought something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a terrible thing to do. These guys are great. You gotta watch them on Discovery. Well, you'll also see a US version, half their shows now, shot right here in the good US of A. Guys, keep up the good work. Thank you very yeah. much. It just never ends with you. I feel like if it's not one thing, it's another. Well, that ends today. The Craftsman C3 line. One battery, more than 30 tools, and the power to tackle any job that stands in your way. You're welcome. The C3 line from Craftsman. Get the new, more powerful XCP battery. Now runs up to four times longer. Craftsman, trust in your hands. So if you walk into Barrett Jackson, you come right into two Ford Mustangs racing on a dyno on a stage. If you go off to the left and go around it, you see the one guy who cannot be beat. <laughs> Where is that guy? John oh, Hennessy, guy. the Venom GT. John hey, Hennessy, good, good to see you, man. Good to be with you guys. Welcome, man. Good to see you. Oh my God, that thing is so beautiful. And, and you have it roped off so people can drool like I'm doing right now. It's what a beautiful machine. World record. Right and you're still flying that flag. I think that is so awesome. American flag, American car, American record. It's kind of very similar to how Bear Jackson appeals to the American and all of us. Right. Top speed, 270.4 miles per hour and still accelerating when we ran out of runway. Yeah. The million two is the price. We've sold a dozen of them around the world, half are in the US. Can I drive it, please? Yeah, you can, <laughs> as a matter of fact. The yeah. sun's shining, come on. Okay. Zero to 200 miles per hour in 14.5 seconds. To put that in perspective, the Bugatti Veyron Supersport does that in about 19 seconds. So, so what is this based on? The Lotus uh, cockpit, we use that out of a Lotus Elise or an Exige. Yeah. Everything in front of the dash is all new. Everything behind the seats is all new. Wow. So we thought about building our whole car from scratch. For the first car, we didn't really want to go quite that extreme. But it's very, very lightweight, which is the whole premise of the car. And uh, lightweight and lots of horsepower to usable package. We look at every cool performance vehicle that Ford comes out with, it's a new platform for us to modify and to tweak to the next level. What do you think about this EcoBoost technology? Do you like it? I do. When they put EcoBoost in the new GT and it's gonna deliver, promise me, when they say 600 horsepower, I imagine it's more than 600 at the wheels. Yeah. I'm guessing 700 horsepower or more. They're making a statement that if the EcoBoost can power this vehicle with this level of performance, this is a halo for that particular engine family, that it trickles down to everything else. There's an EcoBoost twin turbo V6 in the future for Mustang. I would think about I would think so. So I, I think that they're making a statement. John yeah. Hennessy, man, All you're right. the best. Good to meet Thank you, you finally, too. Keep Hang an on. eye on this guy and what he does. This, this is the future <laughs> of performance. Oh, Chris Duke and I have the performance car marketing manager of Ford Motor Company, Steve Ling. Steve? Alan, good, good to, to see, see you. Good to see you, man. Nice to have you here, Randy. So first of all, you and I were together in Detroit. The Ford GT, I mean to tell you, oh my God, let's start right there. How come he didn't bring it here? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> well, you know, no surprise, we only have one. We're showing the first one, but I have to tell you, you know, it was a dream come true. One, to be able to do this car but two, to make it a surprise. And that, that was something we've been planning for some yeah, time. Yeah, how did you do that? I mean, keeping it under wraps with all the spy photographers and everything that you know the world has you know, right I now, will right? tell you, it's one of those classic skunk work sort of thing. 
We have put together a fantastic team. We actually created a studio kind of in the bowels of our product development center, down in the basement, like where we store the clay and that sort of thing. Yeah. The people working next to, next to me, they had no idea what we were doing. So, you know, a lot of late nights, we can all that kind secret. of good stuff, but yeah. it was. And we just knew that that was the only possible way that we were going to make this happen. But it worked out in the surprise we were able to get, not only just at the show, but just for people to say, you know what, I can't believe you did it. I can't believe it looks like that. Yeah, yeah. This is truly going to be the pinnacle of Ford performance and what we're capable of. And not only did you bring back the GT, you brought back the Raptor. And I think it was a big surprise as much as the GT. Oh yeah, I mean, you look at that truck, not only does it look great, 500 pounds lighter with all the aluminum that we, you know, that we used. We're replacing a 6.2 liter V8 that was a great engine with a three and a half liter EcoBoost that's gonna have more power, better fuel. The suspension travel's increased I and mean, they've improved that truck all over. That's exciting and of course the GT350 R. So we've got the next generation of Shelby and everybody says, why did you do all three? Because each of them could have been a show in and of themselves, yeah. but to have them there, I, we think your best foot forward on Ford Performance. So we've actually created a whole new organization, globally aligned, so just a lot of great news. It's, it's a good time to be the performance marketing guy, I'll tell you. Yeah, no doubt, <laughs> and that was like a trifecta, right? You had you know one right after another, and it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Enthusiasts, you know, they, they are the best. And if you give them a great product, they will come, they will be loyal, and that's what makes being in that, this part of the business so much fun. It's, it's, who, look who I'm talking to. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so when do these new vehicles come out? And especially the Raptor, that's the one I'm interested in, of course. Yeah, well, we, we've announced that's gonna come next year. Okay. The, uh, same thing with the new GT. That'll come late 2016. And then uh, later this year, you'll have a new Shelby GT350. So a little bit of announcement ahead of time, but uh, just wanna make sure everybody know they can plan accordingly. There you go, right. Let's talk about EcoBoost technology because you've got it in the GT, you've got it in the Raptor, and it's controversial. It's like, what? So you need to explain the horsepower of these two particular vehicles. I mean, what we found is as long as you provide the goods, you know, people will come. The, the EcoBoost, especially the new three and a half liter. So in the GT, it's going to put out over 600 horsepower in a super lightweight car. I mean, this thing is going to be amazing to drive, but the power characteristics, you know, the torque curve you get when you do direct injection and turbocharging, you get up to max torque super quick and it just stays there. And that works out perfect in a truck that's going to go off road as well. Especially when you take, again, you take the weight out. You think about how that thing's going to be in the Baja 1000. Talk about being able to kick some butt. You know, much more than before even, you know, glide over some, some of those, uh, let's call them imperfections in what it's got to ride over. So the technology is fantastic. And obviously, every time we do the next generation, it just gets better and better. So what's next for you guys? What is the next generation? Because obviously this new power plant is driving a whole bunch for Ford. Are you guys just going to keep improving on this? Absolutely, or what's, and you're going to yeah. see the proliferation. Um, you know, and, and now we've got EcoBoost engines ranging from one liter three cylinder up to this 3.5 liter. You know, again, look at the horsepower, look at the torque that you can get out of it. And what I love about it is it's like in the Mustang. We have a 2.3 liter. You got all this power, 310 horsepower. You go have a good time, or you, know, you can lay off it a bit and you get great, great fuel. So it's the best of both worlds. Here's my question. 50 years later, you're going to take that EcoBoost technology with a V6 and probably freak out Ferrari once again. <laughs> and that'll put a name back on a V6 with an EcoBoost that nobody ever expected. That's right. Steve Link, oh, thank you, man. It's great to spend some time. Thank you both. This is the Performance Car Marketing Manager, and uh, all I can say is watch out 2016 because the GT is coming. Oh, yeah. Now all this Mustang talk was just making us hungry for more. So we headed out to the Ford Ride and Drive track where we got to check out the all new Mustang GT. Okay, Alan, happy you're here. Beautiful day, Friday, Barrett Jackson, Scottsdale. Just gonna kind of show you what a totally stock Mustang GT with the performance package will do around a short course here. All right, can here you drive? Um, I don't know, I'll let you make the judgment after we uh, go around a few times, eh? <laughs> right. But I'll take any excuse I can, so whatever it takes. All right, this is one of the executives from Ford Motor Company. I love it. Holy crap. It's completely predictable. That's bone stock. You know, just hang the tail a little bit, because kind of the whole point of rear-wheel drive, right? Is to have a little bit of uh, tail-happy fun. And, you know, V8s, they do sound awesome. These are six-piston Brembo brake calipers. Okay. Essentially, they are the same brakes that were on the GT500 660 yeah. horsepower car just last year. Yeah. So, well, you can tell because when you nail the brakes, I really tell do, you what. 
I love it. This is a game changer for the auto enthusiast, I think. I mean, this is a everyday work a day Joe guy car, you know? You're right. Well, Mustang GT starts at 33. Yeah, exactly. 58, right? Same mm -hmm. 435 horsepower that's in this thing right now. Absolutely awesome. If it's your car, why not make it your interior? Visit catskin.com today to find out how. Catskin. Express. Transform. Drive. Established in 1971, Barrett-Jackson has auctioned off some of the most iconic cars in history, and this year is no exception with the record-breaking auction of the Ron Pratt Collection. Barrett-Jackson specializes in providing products and services to astute collector car owners and automotive enthusiasts around the world. Gary Batterson from Shelby. Shelby did just make a big announcement. I mean, Carol Shelby's favorite car was the next one, and this is the next one. Carbon fiber hood, front fascia, you know, the splitter down below, the rockers, weld wheels specific to Shelby, rear diffuser, all carbon fiber, so you got a lot of carbon fiber stuff, killer Borla exhaust, great suspension. We worked real closely with Ford Racing. And it's not just about any one individual part, but it's about how the whole thing works together as a unit. Now when you look at this car, you go, okay, that's a Shelby. And it's always gonna look like a Shelby no matter what, because there's a lot of people that are going to do things with Mustang. We made it a Shelby, how do we make it mine? Because people like to personalize their car. So we gave them some choices within the parts that we made Shelby specific. But if there's any confusion, the car has a CSX number from Shelby American. That's exactly right, and it's tracked by Shelby American. It goes in the registry. We know what Ford VIN numbers go with those Shelby VIN numbers. So if anybody were to go, I'm gonna swap this badge and put it on this car, we'll go, eh, don't think so. And oh, by the way, we start at 627 horses, 541 pound-feet of torque. If that's not enough, there will be options over 700 horses. Once a month at least, we're gonna have a track day at Spring Mountain Motorsports Park where guys like you, media people, and some of our customers could do a track wow. delivery experience. Shelby American is alive and well. Visit them in Las Vegas, right near the airport. Gary Patterson, Thanks, brother. It's always a pleasure. Let's go race the bull run. Let's again. go race. Well, we should not only do that, but we need to get you guys out to the track. And you can drive those new Shelby Yes, GTs. please. You're on. All right. You yeah. can do it too. All right. Shelby American. Alan and I love talking about fast new cars, but we also love the classics. We caught up with Joe Petrelli of RPM Motorsports to see how he's continually bringing his collection to be auctioned here at Barrett Jackson. My name is Joe Petralia from Ram Performance Motor Cars in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been a customer of Barrett Jackson for over 10 years now, and I generally bring anywhere from 20 to 30 cars. This year we hit it pretty hard. I got 36 here at the auction. There's all kinds of stuff, muscle cars, hot rods, sports cars, weird European cars like this Volvo right here. This is a car you don't see that often. It's a 66 Volvo 122S. As I was putting the car together, I decided to rebadge it as a 123. It's originally a 122. The 123 was Volvo's sport model or rally car. What it gave you was a dual carb motor, you got fog lights on it, you got a sport steering wheel and a tachometer. It's got the look and that's what I was going for and I, and I think I nailed it. Time will tell when it hits the block, we'll see what happens. Another car that I have here is this 1926 Franklin Victorian Doctor's Coupe. It's had three owners in 88 years. It's a Victorian body style, which is a sedan. It's got a fold and tumble seat. It was called the Doctor's Coupe because of the storage compartment in the back for either a top hat or a medical bag. The car was bought new by a doctor in 1926. He held on to the car until the 70s. Then it changed hands again and then we got it. It's just a neat car. It's powered by a straight six air-cooled engine. It's got one repaint. The paint's in very nice shape for 45, 50 years old when it was painted. The original wood spoke wheels on it. All the chrome and trim and nickel plate and all that stuff on this car is original. I'm really excited about this car. I haven't seen one like this sell. I figure the only place to bring it to sell it is Barrett Jackson. That's why it's here and we're gonna see what it does on the block in a couple of days.
I hope you guys are having a lot of fun with Alan and I here at Scottsdale at the great Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction. We can't show you the auction itself because Velocity has got that covered inside and out, but we do have more exclusive interviews coming up, don't we, Alan? Yeah, we sure do. Aaron Hagar is going to be with us. He is the son of Sammy Hagar, that famous song, I Can't Drive 55. Yeah. And you know what? He loves rat rods. He's got Rat Runners Garage and his own band. We'll be talking to him. Yeah, so stay with us. We'll be right back after the break with more from Scottsdale 2015. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs at auto parts and lawn and garden stores everywhere. Welcome back. It is Barrett Jackson, Aaron Hagar from Rat Runners Garage. Thanks for having me, guys. Yes, thanks for coming over. And you know what else? Oh, I want to hear. You are here, obviously, with all the shiny cars. I know. But shiny is not your thing. Tell the world what you do. You know, shiny is not so bad. It's just, you know, it's a lot of maintenance. Yeah. I, I wash my cars with a blowtorch and steel wool. There you, know you go. I mean? <laughs> you clean the bugs off I'm, one blowtorch. Exactly. Inside. I'm the man of repurpose. I, I like to take beautiful old relics with great history and repurpose them and, and bring them back to life. People call them rat rods, barn finds, whatever you want. I call it rolling art. And, and I'm proud to serve it. So. Name off a couple of your vehicles. Uh, Red Voodoo, uh, October Moon, uh, we have the White Rabbit, we have Little Pepe. By the way, and Chris, Aaron is a, he's an artist, a tremendous artist, and he's got his own band. We're what we call a Baroque artist. <laughs> Baroque. And that works, pun intended, Baroque. yes. And the band, of course, Fight Club. Yeah, Fight Club, one word, two caps, yeah. But you allow people to talk about Fight Club. Yes, that's our number one rule, talk about but it. But how did you get into Rat Rods when Dad owns a California affordability. Ferrari? And... Uh, affordability, okay. literally. I mean, I like patina. I like what nature does. You know, And then also, I mean, we all have that place in our heart when we drive by the same old relic. You know, and you just want to go, man, I wish that was on the road again. That really spawned me to be a builder, a repurposer, and a reconditioner, whatever you want to call it. Because I would go over there and say, dude, what are you going to do with this car? You know, and he'd go, you know what, just take it. My first car was a 58 Alfa Romeo. Back then it was kind of like having an old beat up Volkswagen, except it was an Italian Volkswagen. <laughs> now they're worth a fortune. You learn to tinker with stuff like that. So my first car, I had to tinker with. Rat Runners Garage, Aaron Hagar, Fight Club, Google him. Thank you. Aaron Hagar. <laughs> Too easy, Aaron. Thank you, bro. We Google well. Thank Good you, brother. Good you. Thank I love you, you very much. Well, Alan, you're always talking to me about coming out to Barrett Jackson. This is my first time here, and it's just overwhelming everything Isn't that's it going awesome? on. It yeah. is incredible. So both Alan and I would like to thank Craig Jackson and everybody here at Barrett Jackson for letting us roam around with our motors camera to show you guys what's going on around here. But now it's time for Alan and I to check out the show. So we'll see you guys next time on Motors. Let's roll.